dealing with deliverance from the wretchedness in the bloodline. Amen. This morning is the part two. In Acts chapter number 15, reading through the verse one, we get to verse 28. It is written, for it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. These necessary things. Number one, that he abstain from meats offered to idols. Abstain from meats offered to idols. Two, from blood. Three, from strangled and from fornication. From strangled and from fornication. From which, if ye keep yourself, ye shall do well. Fire ye well. Amen. There was a serious contention and argument whether the Christian Christian or the, the 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 unbelievers who are not in the line of Abraham should follow the laws of Moses and obey everything in the commandments. And they sat down and prayed over it and came with a conclusion that it seemed good to the Holy Ghost that we should not lay the burden of all the suburbs and all these things on you but these four things you have to do don't eat any meat sacrificed to idols don't eat any meat sacrificed to what idols number two don't eat or drink blood eat or drink blood and eating and drinking blood is true there is a culture that when they kill an animal, a sacrificial animal, they took the blood and they cook the blood and they eat it. And there is another group, they also have sex with sisters and brothers. They call insects. In a can, it is called mojafra. So don't do those things. And the third one, make sure that you don't go and eat dead animals here and there. And stop fornicating. Stop fornicating. Hallelujah. Which is one of the paramount keys. Great keys for the devil to destroy the Gentiles. Because most families, they just do the knocking and that is all. Some even don't do the knocking. I was counseling a lady. Say, pastor, he have child with me and he's not taking care of the child say, What is his name? Say, Kofi. So, mention the full name. I said, I don't know. What is mother's name? I said, I don't know. Do you know his sisters? No. So, how come that you open up for him to have sex with you? And you are calling him irresponsible man. You are the first irresponsible mother. For you to open up to somebody, you have no idea who the person is. And go to bed with a person and have sex. Listen very carefully if you can write, write it down. When it comes to generations, preserving generations, the most important part of your life that preserves your generation is your private part. Don't joke with it. That is why Satan is all over making people, making themselves naked. Selling sex on TV, everywhere. You see brand new car built to sell a a naked lady standing by the car. What does selling of car has to do with nakedness? 
almost every advert. Almost every advert. You see the men in all the three or four jeans and the women are always naked. Look at sports. Men are wearing all kinds of things. Women are almost naked. The other day I was watching some sports and I was, wow, this kind of sports. Listen very carefully. You are either going to be a victim or a victor. Choose one. You are either going to be a victim or a victor. You are either going to remain a victim or a victor. The choice is yours. God said, I said before you, blessing and cursing, life and death. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15 and 19. And I advise you, choose life that you may live and your children. See, I'm not going to force you, but I'm advising you. If you like, take it. If you don't like, reject it. Let's see what will come 10, 20 years or 50 years to come. Hallelujah. So God has given you power to choose and not going to control any one of us as a, a robot. We're going to exercise our will to obey him. Isaiah chapter 1 verse number 19. If ye are willing and obedient. If ye are willing and obedient. So your willingness is very important. That's why we don't force people to follow Jesus. To go to church. Say, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. And some but he decided to follow Jesus and may do anything to him, he will still follow Jesus. The same as somebody decides to fornicate. You try to do all kinds of things, you have excuses. Hallelujah. I was preaching to somebody and said, even Mary Madarine was a girlfriend of Jesus. Said, uh, Nigerian people said, thunder, fire your mouth. <laughs> thunder, fire your mouth. If you go among them, they have all kinds of things to defend their acts and to justify their sins. Stop drinking. Say, the Bible says, because of your, the sickness of your stomach or weakness, so drink wine. It's a petition of wine. Bobesan. A petition of Bobesan. You have all kinds of genes in, in, your, in your bar and you are happy because you think that that is the highest class of people you belong. No. It's the people that are going to hell. If you don't destroy that bar in your house, you will go to hell straight. Those of you have bars in your house. Be very careful. Hallelujah. Every one of you, by the end of this month, you must read Genesis chapter 1 to chapter 50. You must go through. Every one of you. I'm giving an assignment. Genesis, the book of beginnings. That's where we find out the causes of problems. So if you want to solve problems, you have to go to Genesis. You see why certain things are in the bloodline and are working. Last week I talked to you about Abraham's bloodline curse. That came as a result of idol worship in Joshua chapter 24 verse 2. So your fathers worshipped idols long ago. And for that reason, Abraham's line, there was barrenness. They were attracted to Beautiful and fair ladies, yet they were not productive. It took Abraham serving God for 25 years for God to open the womb of Sarah. Isaac for 20 years for God to open the womb of Rebekah. And Leah and Rahel also were barren. All these people that were married to the patriarchs, the fathers of the faith, were barren. It shows you that idol worship releases all kinds of curses and hardship into people. Because the contention, the contention that made Satan separated himself from the Almighty God was found or written in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 to 15. Satan said, I want to be like God. I want to be like God. And to be a God, you must receive sacrifice. So, anytime you sacrifice to anything, you are saying to that thing that you are my God. And God said, this position, I don't contest with anyone. So, there was war in heaven. Satan was demanding sacrifice. 
And Michael and his angels fought Satan. And they were flushed out of heaven. And when they came down, they thought that they are going to settle here. And God had another plan. He fixed the earth again. And he puts man on the earth. That man will have dominion. But Adam sinned by disobeying God. So if you read Job chapter 31 verse 33, it says, I am not like Adam who hide his sins in his bosom. Job 31 33. I'm not like Adam who hide his sins in his bosom. When Adam was confronted, why have you eaten the fruit of the tree which I said you should not eat? He said, it is not me. It is the woman you gave to me. So Adam started blaming God. And there are a lot of people who are blaming all kinds of people. Stop blaming them. It will never solve your problem. Because my wife is not performing well in bed. That's why I have had that. Your wife is not performing. Teach her. Do what? Teach her. Those who are performing, somebody taught them. Somebody taught them. So teach them. Because my husband is not doing good teaching. How did you acquire that knowledge? <laughs> How did you acquire that knowledge in the first place? You learn it from somewhere. So teach them to save your house. If you don't do it that way, you'll be in church for years and you never see the glory of the Lord. And you can never enjoy financial dominion because the moment money comes into your hands, then immoral spirits will begin to show up their heads and you destroy yourself. Hallelujah. Now we're going into the Bible. David was a victim of this bloodline curse. In Psalm 51 verse number 14, David was a victim. This bloodline curse. Deliver me from blood guiltiness. Deliver me from blood guiltiness. And I'm going to show you where it started. In the Genesis. After David had ascended the throne. And the time has come for kings to go to war. One evening he decided that. Now I have men are trained. So I'm not going to war. Let my men go to war. Let me relax in the house. Why relaxing in the house? He got up in the evening. Just to throw around his building. He was living in a story building. Just to, Then he saw a lady washing herself. After her seven days, the Bible called it purification. So she just finished her menses, her cycle, washing herself. And the man has gone to war. So the lady was not expecting any man in the house. Just like if you go to any place where the ladies are, you know the way they behave. Amen. The lady was just washing herself, not knowing that the king was in the house. All of a sudden, the king, eyes catch the lady. And he sent one of his boys, go and call the lady for me. The lady came to the king, and the king says, I want to have sex with you. I said, I am one of your servant's wife. David said, forget. He engaged in sex with her, and this man has married this lady for years, yet no issue. But the very day David had sex with that lady, the lady became pregnant. When it was told David that the lady was pregnant, he said, what? How can I handle this situation? All of a sudden, demons, I call them whispering demons. These are demons that stand behind your ears and begin to talk to you. Started giving David ideas. Call the man out of the battlefield, let him come to the house, then have sex with the wife so that he can cover up. But that man was faithful to God and has vowed that so long as the ark of God was in the field and his generals are fighting, he will never go home and have fun with or sex with a wife. So the young man came to the house. David said, How is the war? And he blew David everything that was happening. He said, Okay, go home and visit your wife tomorrow. I'll send you back. The man got down, get to the security men, eat with them, drink with them, and slept there. The next morning, the man was called upon. How is your wife? So I never go home. Where did you sleep last night? I was with the security guys. 
And the Bible said David had a, heard another voice. This night, delay this guy. Give him more alcohol. Let him drink. And when he drink too much, he never be able to No straw with this young soldier. The king was eating with him, and the king was giving passing on drinks to him with some intentions. He drank and overdrank. He said they are taking him over. He said, No, 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 I will not go home. So long as the ark of God is on the field and my master Joab is fighting, I won't go home and satisfy myself with my wife. Talking about wife, not girlfriend. Some of you are satisfying yourself with all kinds of. I will never go home and do that. So the next day, it was reported to David that after the drinking, the guy never went home. And David said, this guy, I have to take him off. Then he wrote a letter. Gave it to him. So he gave it to General Joab. Joab took it read it and it was written as a commander in chief of Israel, David Joab, I command you put this young man to where there is danger, where you know that men who are stronger than him are fighting and surround him with few people and tell them that when you see that the battle becomes tough, let them withdraw that they will kill this man listen very carefully, if a man commits sin, he try to cover the sin with other sins. Never do it. Isaiah 51 verse 1 says, Behold, the hand of the Lord is not shortened, neither as his ears door, but your iniquities have separated you and your God, and you cry to God, and he does not hear. You pray, he has turned his feet because of cover of sins. If you read Isaiah 59 verse 1, our sins testify against us. They testify. So whenever you are praying, there's a shut up, shut up, shut up. How are you doing? Yesterday. Some of you, the moment you start praying serious, you see all kinds of things in your mind. Pictures telling you all kinds of things. These are testi- <laughs> testimonies that come from sin. Our sins testify against us. And our transgressions, we know them. We know them. So anytime you are dealing with sin, please stop joking. Stop pretending as if you don't know what you have done. Our transgressions, we know them. The man was killed. And after one month, the lady mourned the husband. David went in and married the lady so fast so that his sin would not be discovered. So when David married her, because it is within 40 days pregnancy then when he become pregnant nobody will know because some people deliver seven months some eight months two weeks <laughs> so David tried to cover up and God sent a prophet to David David there's a rich man have all kinds of sheep and a poor man somewhere but when the rich man had a visitor that poor man have only one sheep the rich man went to that poor man to take his sheep Kill for the visitor. Such a man, what do we do to him? And David said, if that man is on my land, as surely as the Lord lives, he will be killed. I will kill him. He deserved to die. If he's in my jurisdiction, in Israel, this man deserved to die. Because this rich man have several sheep. So why do you have to kill the only sheep of that poor man? A Nathan prophet said, you are the one. When you want to have sex, you have wives. By that time, David had eight wives. You have wives. And God sent me to come and tell you, even if you want more, you should have asked me and I'll give it to you. But by this act, you have opened the mouth of my enemies to disgrace me, to rain down insult on me. So for this reason, this is what is going to happen to you. And David was punished for his sins. 
the child will die. That's the first punishment. You, know, you did it in the secret, but somebody in your house will line up your wives in the open daytime and you have sex with them. And sword will never depart from your house. Your children will kill themselves, rape themselves because of this thing that you have done. David fasted for seven days. Dry fasting. The child died. After that fasting and prayer, he went to 40 days fasting and prayer. And the prayer of David in that 40 days fasting and prayer is Psalm 51. Psalm 51. Have mercy on me. And in verse 14, he said, Deliver me from blood guiltiness. Deliver me. Where do this uh, blood guiltiness start from? In Genesis chapter number 38, we see David's grandpa, Judah, going out with a certain man called Adoram. Genesis 38 verse 1. And when David went out, Judah went out, he found a lady out among the Canaanites and he did not perform the marital rites. He went in to that lady, go to verse 2. And have sex with the lady. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua. And he took her and went in unto her. Have sex with, before performing marital rites. He took her and have sex. And the children that were born to this young man, Judah, were wicked. Because out of wedlock, the Bible called them bastards. Out of wedlock, wicked children were born to Judah. And in verse number 4, the Bible says, the first born of Judah called Er was wicked. And she conceived again and bare a son and she called his name Onan. Go. And she yet conceived again. Okay, go to verse 6. Verse 6. And Judah took a wife for Er, his firstborn, whose name was Tamar. Go. And Er, Judah's firstborn, was what? Wicked in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord did what? Killed him. Slew him. God killed him. God did what? Are you afraid to say it? God did what? Say it boldly. Slew. It's like going to Mayanka. God took a knife, cut off the throat. That's what we call slewing killed him. Because the man was born out of wedlock and came with full of demons of wickedness. Go to the next verse. I'm going to show you. Those of you who have been using condoms to save yourself, I say you can save yourself from gonorrhea but not demons. You remember last, last week I said STDs. Sexually transmitted what? Demons. You can save yourself from gonorrhea but not demons. Now, in the next verse, and Judah said unto Onan, go, that's the second born, in unto thy brother's wife, and marry her, and raise up seed to thy brother. Go to the next verse. And Onan knew that the seed should be not his, and it came to pass, when he went in unto his brother's wife, that he spilled it on the ground. He have sex, and when he's about to discharge, he pulled himself on the sperms fall on the ground. Just like people using condoms. You do everything. You take it from your manhood. You throw it away. And what happened? <laughs> Least that he should give seed to the brother. Go to the next verse. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord. Wherefore God did what? Killed him also. So how many of you deserve to be killed? the message of the Lord. Some of us, we will never live to see today. God killed him also. And Judah have only three sons. Two of them are dead. And according to the custom of those days, when something happens, the lady is to be given to the brother. So, Judah said, maybe you are a witch. That's why you marry my sons and they are dying. So go to your father's house. Let your one grow. When he grow up, 
I'll give him to you. And that lady waited and waited and waited and found out that the last one has grown up. And the lady also wants to prove a point that she's not a witch. It's not a cause. The last one has grown up waiting for the last one to be given, but he was not given to her. So, one day he heard that Judah was coming to visit his farms, her livestock farms. So, the lady put off all the morning clothes and dressed as a harlot, sat somewhere because Judah had problem with his feelings. Listen very carefully. Write this scripture down. Galatians chapter 5, verse number 21 and 22. If a problem with your feelings, you don't need a wife. You need self-control. You don't need what? A wife. Let me marry early so that I will not fornicate. It's a lie. What you need is self-control. If you don't have self-control, you marry, you still fornicate. So, marrying is not a solution to fornication. Solution to fornication is self-control. And the Bible said the fruit of the spirit is self-control. Hallelujah. So, if you don't have it, ask God to give you what? Self-control. Because one day, your wife will have her mercies in the, that week. According to Bible, as a man, you are not to touch your wife. If you touch your wife when she is in her menses, you are bringing a curse upon yourself. If you have done it before, you need deliverance. And if some man has done it to you before, you also need deliverance. Then when your wife gives birth, at least you have to wait for 40 days to 3 months. So if you do not have self-control, those periods will catch up with you and you disgrace yourself. Then the third one is when your wife travels, maybe there's a funeral and he has to go. Maybe one week for the preparation before you go. Before your wife comes, all the ladies in the house that come to cook or wash for you, you'll be cooking on the bed. And when you engage in these things, you are catching up demons into your bloodline. Into your bloodline. And when demons enter into your bloodline, their mission is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And there are a lot of you have more demons than others. Because you have done several dangerous things that cannot be told. Dangerous things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 